Hello and welcome to the Elgin Video Tour. I'm Sam Olson and today we are at Lourdes Park on the east side of Elgin. Lourdes Park is a beautiful 108 acre park that features picnic areas, playgrounds, tennis and basketball courts, a family aquatic center, a nature trail, and three lagoons. Lourdes Park was originally a farm owned by jo Dr. Joseph Teft. In 1893, the property was purchased by George and Mary Lord and presented to the city of Elgin as a gift with the agreement that the property would be used as a city park. The park was dedicated in 1898. The pavilion, that is more or less a landmark for the area, was rebuilt in 1898 after the original structure burned to the ground months after its opening. One century ago, the park featured two lagoons, a pavilion, pits for berries and other small animals, a large enclosure that housed deer, goats, peacocks, and other fancy fowls, and a building with glass sides that featured eagles and buzzards. Swings, teeters, and sign boxes were installed in 1900. The park we enjoy today has undergone many changes since its inception in the late 1800s. The original pavilion burned to the ground on September 30, 1897, and was replaced with a much larger building known today as the Lord's Park Pavilion. Many weddings and events are now held at this location. The bear cages were filled in in 1969 and the eagles are gone. Also visitors can enjoy watching the American bison, elk, and white-tailed deer that live in the enclosures. During the summer months, the Lord's Park Farm Zoo features sheep, cattle, chickens, pigs, goats, and more. Lord's Park is a very family-friendly location that gives the feel of the great outdoors but still incorporates the city feel with the many choices of game courts to play on accompanied by, of course, the big pavilion overlooking it all. However, the park's important place in urban life has not changed over the years. George Lord remarked in his speech of the dedication of the park in 1898. The park is designated as a public resting place, a place to which the people may resort for pleasure, rest, and recreation. From this standpoint, who can estimate its value or have a conception of the beauties that may be derived from the frequent and prolonged visits to its cool and refreshing retreats? This observation still rings as true today as it did over 100 years ago. The natural history collection belonging to Mr. and Mrs. Lord was first exhibited in the Lord's Park Pavilion in 1898. However, it was the Lord's desire that their collection be housed in its own building. In 1904, a local architect, David Postel, was contracted to design a building to this purpose. Construction of the current building's central structure began two years later, to be paid for in donations, the largest donation coming from the Lord's. When Mr. Lord died in 1906, the center section of the building had been completed as well as the basement of the West Wing at a cost of $9,000. The following year, the metal roof covering the West Basement was removed and the West Wing was completed. However, after the death of Mr. Lord, interest in the project declined and the North and East Wings of the building were not completed as originally planned. Further delays in opening the museum were caused by breaks in the floor in 1908 and disagreements over hiring a full-time curator. The goal of housing a museum collection was forgotten as the building served as a storage place for hay from 1909 to 1911, and also as the city dog pound, with animals being disposed of in the basement from 1911 to 1917. Originally named Lord Memorial Museum, the building finally opened on November 12, 1920. Finally in August of 1998, ground was broken to complete the East Wing. The exterior of the East Wing was built to match the original building. Architects went so far to match the brick and limestone detailing. The interior was built to complement the original design while keeping Americans with Disabilities Act or ADA requirements in mind. The Elgin Public Museum was finally reopened in July of 2000 with a handicapped accessible north entrance, elevator, and public restrooms. New exhibits included exploring the waterways, the LaSalle expedition, nature of Elgin, and a hands-on children's discovery room. The museum store was expanded as well. The Elgin Public Museum is now the oldest building in Illinois built as a museum that is still serving that purpose. Its neoclassical style of architect is unmistakable from the front with its two free columns and two square engaged columns. Inside the museum, visitors can still experience the beautiful and original oak woodwork, plaster walls, and ceramic floor tiles. Lord's Park is a very family-friendly location that gives the feel of the great outdoors but still incorporates the city feel with the many choices of game courts to play on, accompanied by, of course, the big pavilion overlooking it all.